today's video, I want to show you exactly how you can take a boring looking mesh, something blocky, something very beginner looking, and turn it into something a lot more high quality, something that looks more visually appealing. The truth is, a lot of people struggle with this, especially when they're just getting into Blender, but this video is going to solve it. All right, so I'm gonna use a very basic example here because if I use something more advanced, it's gonna be a little bit too confusing. So let's go ahead and make a shape kind of like this, maybe like a rectangle more or less. And we can do, you know, something like that. And then maybe what we can do is we can go in here and this is gonna be the shitty example, by the way, this is not meant to look good, but I need to do it to demonstrate, you know, the idea here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something like that. We'll go ahead and mirror that to the other side and then maybe what we can do here is we can go in and let's just make like a slice operation and then we kind of have like a basic blocky shape like this now if you look at any beginners piece of you know artwork or model or whatever I can almost guarantee you it's gonna look something along these lines it's gonna be very blocky it's gonna have some very basic boolean operations it's just gonna look clunky and just very unappealing to look at. There's nothing particularly interesting about this. It's just basically just a glorified cube. So a lot of beginners, and if you're a beginner watching this, you probably do this as well. A lot of beginners will do this. They'll make some very basic blocky shapes because they don't yet understand how to visualize something a little bit more visually appealing and kind of the ideas that go into that. But don't worry, I'm going to help you with that. So we're going to go in just add another cube. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. It's it's almost laughable how quickly you can fix your designs if you kind of follow this idea. So just like I did before, we're gonna go in, we're going to just kind of do the same thing. Let me move this over, scale this a bit, and let me go ahead and just rotate this and make it more or less the same length. That looks good. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and instead of just doing a bevel up here, what I'm gonna do is utilize, you know, some uh, some more smooth kind of dynamic bevels before we do anything else. So notice here, it's just very blocky. Instead, what I could do is I could bevel this area, right? And now we kind of have the sides, you know, significantly more smooth and kind of you know, a bit more visually appealing to look at, especially if you use this cavity feature up here. It'll kind of highlight the edges nicely for you. You can copy my settings if you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, more or less. Just move this over for reference. And maybe this one could be a little bit um, smaller as well. There we go. So notice I didn't really do anything different. I had the same base shape, but what I did was I beveled the edges first, and now we have something a little bit more soft, a little bit more dynamic, and that's kind of what I'm going for. Now, how about the front here? It's very blocky, very clunky. Well, now that we've added this bevel here, if I just add you know, a single segment bevel here, it looks a lot more interesting, as you can see. And I could even stack you know, these elements on top of each other. Instead of just leaving it like this, what I could do is maybe pull this back a little bit, right? and then I could introduce a bevel here. So now what I'm basically doing is I'm kind of repeating these oval type elements here. So this bevel here is kind of making a nice smooth transition to this very hard defined edge over here. And this is just generally more appealing to look at to the, to the human eye. I don't know what it is, I don't understand the psychology, but that's kind of how we're programmed. This looks a lot less you know, robotic and, you know, kind of painful than this one over here that's very clunky, right? So you can kind of see we have this. And then what I could do is let's just mirror that to the other side. And now I have something a bit more interesting. I think this bevel, and you know, the bevel size matters as well. If this is like too large, it's going to look strange. So what I would always recommend doing is making, you know, these transitions very small if that's, uh, if that's what you're going for. So now we have something kind of like that, which is pretty cool. And then what I can do is I can, you know, kind of stack these elements again. So maybe I could go here to this face. I could use a, I'm just gonna use hard ops, a Boolean selection to Boolean. And this will basically extract that face and then run a Boolean 
oops, let me try that again, all the way through the object here. And then I could press Q, move that over to a slice. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see, now I'm just repeating these same elements that already exist. Maybe I could even add a small bevel modifier here. And you can see how much more interesting, you know, the shape looks compared to this one, which is very blocky. So a lot of people doing the kind of blocky modeling, the very beginner type modeling like this, you can quickly get into a more advanced stage by just utilizing bevels and booleans in a more efficient way. So how about this, uh, this little slice right here? I'm gonna go ahead and just do the same exact thing basically. I'm just gonna go in, run a slice operation, and boom, we have something like that. And you can already see how much more of, it almost looks like a product in a way, like this could potentially become like a battery charger or you know, a lighter or something, compared to this that just looks like a completely amateur beginner type of object. You have no clue what the hell this is, but just by introducing some bevels and utilizing some basic design principles, you can already get a feel for what this piece right here could actually turn into. You can already begin to see it. You understand what I mean? Hard to explain because it's a very intuitive feeling, but hopefully uh, you get the point I'm making. And from here on out, what you can do is just keep adding the detail, you know, building this into something. Maybe you have a reference photo and you're making your own spin on it. You know, you could keep building on top of this and making it a lot more advanced compared to this clunky piece over here. I mean, no matter what you do, it's just going to look very blocky very boring. So this is the power of bevels and the power of just using some of these basic principles that I showed you in this video. It's really not that difficult. I'm not going to drag this video out any longer. I hope this kind of demonstrated the point. I wanted this to be quick and easy, something that you could employ right now. Literally, you click off this video, make a new design, and kind of utilize some of these ideas here. And just watch how much better and more interesting your models are going to look. It's really that easy. Now guys, if you don't know how to model or you don't know any of the basics about Blender in the first place, that is going to be an issue. So if that's you and you need something to get you up to speed with Blender very quickly, I would highly recommend hopping into our Hard Surface Jumpstart program. It is free. Over 70,000 students have went through it and you can just get it in the link in the description if you need to get started with Blender. So hope this video is useful and I'll see you in the next one.